an expedition finds a lost mammal and a shrimp that lives in trees. In the Cyclops Mountains in the Indonesian part of the island of New Guinea, Oxford scientists and local guides made a series of spectacular discoveries. A scientific expedition to a treacherous mountain range on the island of New Guinea has collected the first ever photographic evidence confirming the survival of a bizarre egg-laying mammal. The team also found dozens of undescribed species of insects as well as new found arachnids, amphibians and even a shrimp that dwells in trees. This rediscovered mammal, known as Attenborough's long-beaked echidna and named for Sir David, has the quills of a hedgehog, the snout of an anteater and the feet of a mole said James Kempton, a biologist at the University of Oxford who led the exploration to the Cyclops Mountains in the Indonesia province of Papua. Most details about the life history of this critically endangered mammal, which is slightly smaller than a house cat, remain a total mystery. For years, the echidna was feared extinct. The only prior scientific record of the species was a specimen collected in 1961, so it is really valuable to understand that it still occurs in the Cyclops Mountains said Christopher Helgen, a mammalogist and director of the Australian Museum Research Institute who wasn't involved in the expedition. To me, these are some of the most special animals on Earth. This species is one of five living monotremes, a strange group of primitive mammals that includes the platypus and three other echidna species. Monotremes diverged from the common ancestors of other mammals around 200 million years ago. The five species lay eggs and nurse their young with milk through pores in their skin, as they lack nipples and possess snouts that sense movements and electrical currents in prey. In a patch of forest toward the top of the Cyclops Mountains, the researchers also found an unusual type of shrimp, slightly larger than grains of rice. These crustaceans were all over the place, including in trees, moss, rotting logs and even under rocks, said Leonidas Romanos de Vrinaglu, the expedition's lead entomologist who works at the Oxford University Museum of Natural History. It's a very weird creature, dr. de Vrinaglu said, adding that it's able to leap three or four feet in the air to escape predators. We were quite awestruck, really. There are about nine other species of terrestrial shrimp, all of which live by the shore and are known as beach hoppers. Our species definitely hops, but it lives nowhere near a beach dr. Tavrinaglu quipped. Near constant rain and steep terrain make the Cyclops Mountains difficult to explore. So do venomous snakes and tree-dwelling leeches. Dr. Tavrinaglu said he had fractured his hand coming down a mountain. The researchers placed 80 camera traps at various elevations in June and July, and eventually collected 14 photographs and 4 videos of echidnas. And it wasn't until the last day of the expedition that they discovered they had spotted the echidna. The results were uploaded to the website BioRexiv ahead of submission to a journal for peer review. Worldwide, there are more than 2,000 lost species of plants and animals that have not been scientifically recorded for over a decade. It's vital to know whether such species are still around as human activity accelerates species extinctions, Dr. Kempton said. That's especially true with evolutionarily distinct species like monotremes, he added. These five species are the sole guardians of 200 million years of evolutionary history, Dr. Kempton said, to protect that unique and fragile evolutionary history is extremely important. The scientists found another of these lost species toward the top of the mountains when they spotted a pair of mares honeyeaters, lively birds with curved bills and long tails that haven't been documented for 15 years. Local residents from the village of Yongsu Sapari, on the north side of the mountains, including two guides, Zacharias and Samuel Srindanya, were crucial to finding species and properly placing camera traps, said Madeleine Food, an expedition member and social scientist at the University of Oxford. Local students also received biodiversity survey training from the researchers during the track. The team plans to name the new species for the local students and collaborators. During one climb a researcher fell into a moss-covered hole that turned out to be an unknown cave system.
Within it the team found blind spiders and crickets, and a large whip scorpion, all new to science, DR, the Brinaglu said. The team also found at least three new species of amphibians in the surrounding forest. Much of the Cyclops Mountains is a nature reserve, but surrounding tropical forests face threats such as clearing for agriculture, logging and mining. Ian Kobik, co-founder of Yapenda, a conservation and research foundation based in Papua that helped organize the expedition, said that such explorations would help protect the flora and fauna of the area. I really hope and believe this will become a catalyst for strong conservation of the Cyclops mountain range, he said. A mirror reveals a surprise about bird brains. A modified version of the classic mirror test suggested that roosters recognize their reflections. The idea of a chicken running around with its head cut off, inspired by a real-life story, may make it seem like the bird doesn't have much going on upstairs. But Sonia Hillemacher, an animal behavior researcher at the University of Bonn in Germany, always knew that chickens were more than mindless sources of wings and nuggets. They are way smarter than you think, Ms. Hillemacher said. Now, in a study published in the journal PLOS One on Wednesday, Ms. Hillemacher and her colleagues say they have found evidence that roosters can recognize themselves in mirrors. In addition to shedding new light on chicken intellect, the researchers hope that their experiment can prompt re-evaluations of the smarts of other animals. The mirror test is a common, but contested, test of self-awareness. It was introduced by the psychologist Gordon Gallup in 1970. He housed chimpanzees with mirrors and then marked their faces with red dye. The chimps didn't seem to notice until they could see their reflections, and then they began inspecting and touching the marked spot on their faces, suggesting that they recognized themselves in the mirror. The mirror test has since been used to assess self-recognition in many other species, but only a few, such as dolphins and elephants, have passed. After being piloted on primates, the mirror test was somehow sealed in a nearly magical way as sacred said owner GNTRKN, a neuroscientist at Ruhr University Bochum in Germany and an author of the study who worked with Ms. Hillemacher and Inga Thiemann, also at the University of Bonn. But different cognitive processes are active in different situations, and there's no reason to think that the mirror test is accurate for animals with vastly different sensory abilities and social systems than what chimps have. The roosters failed the classic mirror test. When the team marked them with pink powder, the birds showed no inclination to inspect or touch the smudge in front of the mirror the way that DR Gallup's chimps did. As an alternative, the team tested rooster self-awareness in a more fowl-friendly way. Roosters don't just crow in the morning to wake farmers. They are known to cry out to warn each other when a hawk is circling overhead. But when they're alone and a predator is near, they stay silent to avoid attracting attention. Ms. Hillemacher wrangled roosters and gave them time in an enclosure with a mirror so they could get used to the experimental setup. Because roosters warn others more reliably than hens do, the team chose to focus on them, but they believe the results of the test apply to all chickens. She then projected a hawk silhouette over the roosters to see how they'd react. When another rooster was visible through a partition, the rooster that was the subject of an experiment cried out to warn the other of danger. When alone without a mirror, the bird stayed quiet. When another rooster was present, but blocked from view by a mirror, the test subject still tended to stay silent. The researchers interpreted this behavior to mean that the rooster didn't perceive its reflection to be another rooster, and felt it also showed that the birds were sensing each other with sight, not hearing or smell. Potentially, this study shows strong evidence for self-awareness, said Mason Orikoda, a biologist at Osaka Metropolitan University in Japan who wasn't involved in the research. However, these results will not be enough to persuade all scientists. Dr. Koda emphasized the need for more control experiments to rule out other possibilities. Dr. Koda knows well how tough persuading scientists can be, after his own extensive efforts to demonstrate self-awareness in the Blue Street Cleaner Ras Fish. Dr. Tiemann hopes to next explore differences between roosters in how much they alarm call, which she said has implications for protecting flocks from predators.
We are trying to identify those roosters who like to warn, she said, who take their job seriously. The authors also hope that other researchers will use their approach to test other animals that warn each other about danger or to test self-awareness in ways that are relevant to the animals in the experiment. It's possible that many animals that failed the original mirror test may pass a trial more geared to the way they live. If ecologically relevant behavior like the alarm call in chicken will be used in the studies on self-awareness in animals, the animal self-awareness will be more correctly judged, Dr. Coda said. The original mark test exactly delays the progress of understood.